Prussian uh, served uh, the uh, interests of uh, uh, of Western companies and of Western interests as perceived by uh, the American and British uh, governments. American and British governments have allied themselves uh, quite uh, consistently with, with uh, uh, repressive uh, regimes. The Western uh, democracies, uh, which advocated uh, uh, human rights and were uh, in many ways promoting uh, 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 forms of government that are uh, far from democratic. Uh, so, to that sense, uh, it is uh, to that extent, it is. Uh, ironic, uh, but uh, this was the way of the, of the period. Down the long years since independence, despite all the allegations of torture and abuse, Britain has remained a close friend and staunch ally of the Bahraini regime. Foreign Office Minister Jeremy Hanley wrote, Bahrain is a good friend and ally whose stability is a matter of great concern to us. We stay in close touch with the Bahraini authorities and offer them help and advice in a wide range of areas. That letter was dated April 1996. Since then, little seems to have changed. British strategic interests, it appears, remain paramount. We asked the Foreign Office to explain why it was that Ian Henderson had not been called to answer his accusers. They declined to take part in this programme. While local MPs have taken little interest in the alleged torturer with a home in the West Country, others at Westminster have been vocal in pressing for Ian Henderson's prosecution. Henderson might have walked from the fevered pages of a Graham Greene novel. He is known in the Gulf as the Butcher of Bahrain. He is the head of the security services and director of intelligence. And he has gathered around him the kind of British dogs of war mercenaries whose guns and electric shock equipment are for hire to anyone who will pay the price. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I believe we as a people have a clear duty to repudiate the conduct of one of our citizens in the service of a foreign power who stands condemned of crimes against humanity. I think it's very shaming for Britain. I mean, during the time when Mr. Henderson was active, uh, we were constantly asked about his status there as a British citizen, um, how Britain came to allow him to uh, undertake these repugnant duties in Bahrain, and whether there was no influence that Britain could bring to bear um, on the government of Bahrain to have him removed from that post. Um, but of course, the reply that we always used to get was that we had nothing to do with him. Although he was a British citizen, he was employed by another government, and we had no say either in the appointment or in the performance of his duties. And it is inexplicable to me that no action has been taken during that period. Plenty of evidence is available, plenty of witnesses are available, many people are prepared to come forward and testify. Action should be taken. I draw the conclusion that Britain and the United States uh, have a set of standards which vary according to the nature of their relationship with a particular country. Um, and I'm sorry to have to say that because I believe that human rights should be looked at in an absolute way. We shouldn't pull our punches. Meanwhile, Ian Henderson's home, here on the edge of Dartmoor, remains a very British retreat from the heat. Do I get the point? Oh, hello. What? what are you hello. doing? My name's Graham Smith from I don't Carlton, care who you are. Carlton Television. You just can't go around doing this. I'll get the place on that. Okay. I've come to see Mr Henderson. You? Are you anything to do with Colton? Oh, no, off, please. Well, I've just had a 10, 15 minute conversation with the couple who look after this house for Mr. Henderson. They confirm that he does own this property, but he's currently in Bahrain, although he was here as recently as three weeks ago. A point which seems to be confirmed by this letter, which we've received from a post office box in Bahrain. It's from Ian Henderson. He says, Any claim that torture or inhuman treatment was ever carried out, condoned or permitted by me is totally untrue and entirely false. I must make it clear that I am not prepared to contribute to any programme or production on the subject. Two years ago, the then Home Secretary, Jack Straw, ordered a police inquiry into allegations against Ian Henderson. 
Today, that inquiry appears no nearer resolution. The police investigation, we're told, is continuing. In his letter declining to take part in this program, Ian Henderson invited us to bring any evidence we may have collected to the notice of the appropriate authorities, in this case, the Metropolitan Police, and through them, here to the offices of the Crown Prosecution Service. We intend to do just that. The irony is that most of the evidence is almost certainly in there already. I feel that those guards are machines. They can't feel. Because when they bring us, they keep on saying jokes. When they beat us, they laugh. I don't feel that they are human at all. There's another special report next Wednesday at 10.50. A new series profiling the work of a regional emergency team begins on Friday at 10.30.